you're watching The Dose. Remember to join us on Facebook at The Dose TV Show and visit our website for updates at www.thedosetvshow.com. Be sure to tell a friend. Hi there, everyone. Welcome to The Dose, uh, presented by Sweet Spot Smiles. And of course, we put the spotlight on health and wellness because it matters to you. And right now, we're in your backyard with the one and only board-certified endocrinologist, Dr. Ronald Watts. He is with Eagles Landing Diabetes and Endocrinology Center. So excited to have you on. Diabetes, the D word, it is uh, heavily talked about now that the rate of type 2 diabetes, as you know, has doubled in the last 10 years throughout the world. Why do so many people continue to be diagnosed and struggle with this very serious health condition. Thanks for having me, Shana. I really appreciate being here and taking the time to explain some of your questions to the common medical problems in our community. But type 2 diabetes has been on the increase in the past several decades and is expected to increase over the next two decades, mainly because of the fact of the increasing rates of obesity okay. in the United States. Wow. I mean, I have to ask this, is that our diet? Is it genetics or perhaps the environment? Well, it's a combination of mainly two things. Your genetic gives you the predisposition for diabetes. Okay. You may be predisposed to getting diabetes. But if you're not active, physically active, or if you're gaining weight and becoming even overweight yes. or obese, you increase that risk for diabetes on top of your genetic predisposition. Okay. So it's very serious business we're talking about our health, putting the spotlight on diabetes and other wellness topics. Uh, for our audience at home right now, we hear the word type 2 diabetes, even type 1, but for type 2, which is more commonly diagnosed, what exactly is it and how does it impact the body? So type 2 diabetes, as you said, is 90% of diabetes in the United States have type 2. Okay. That is adult onset, but sometimes even beginning in the teenage years. I see. In that case, the body, the pancreas, makes insulin to control your glucose. But imagine if you are making the insulin hormone, but it's not able to do the job okay. of moving glucose from the blood into your muscle cells, yes. into your fat cells. Because imagine the glucose just stayed in your blood, it's not going to do any good until it okay. got into the cells of your body. Right. Well, in type 2 diabetics, as they gain more weight, the insulin becomes not effective. We call it insulin resistance. It's not working at the cells. Okay. Therefore, they need, um, well, it can improve with diet to lose weight, it can improve insulin resistance. Exercise can improve insulin resistance at yes. the muscle cells, right? So the insulin works better. Or they may need medications, um, such as oral medication or injections okay. medications. Type 1 diabetics need insulin. The, the pancreas not making insulin usually just begins in younger people, younger yes. adults even children. But in type 1 diabetes, it's not an insulin resistance problem, so that the body's not making insulin, they have to be treated with insulin. That's the difference. Wow. Now, I want to make this uh, very clear for people. If someone has type 2 diabetes, certainly there are medical options out there to be treated, that it's important for them to be compliant, but it's more than just saying there's a stamp of type 2 diabetes. They're at more risk for a stroke and heart attack, correct? Correct. So type, having type 2 diabetes, the, the best way um, to control it, and we have patients who manage the type 2 diabetes yes. and live to 80 years old, 90 years old wow. with it well controlled. So it's not actually the diagnosis that okay. causes the complications. It's how you manage the diagnosis. So if you had type 2 diabetes that's not properly controlled, you have increased risk of macrovascular, large vessel blood vessel disease, okay. such as heart attacks, strokes, and peripheral artery disease, oh, wow. circulation problems in your feet, gangrene, etc. But you also have a risk for developing things that won't kill you, okay. but will make your life miserable. Would I you see. say blindness? Okay. Right? Retinopathy Absolutely. is the most, most common cause of blindness in the United States caused by diabetes. Kidney disease, okay. kidney failure requiring dialysis three days a week yes. or dialysis at night, peritoneal is all complicated. Okay. And neuropathy in the feet. Now you would agree, neuropathy pain and numbness in the feet, yes. kidney disease, requiring dialysis, and eye disease, losing your sight. It's not going to kill you, but it'll make your life pretty poor quality of life. Those things are more common, all of them, with poor control of diabetes. Diabetics should be aware of the A1C, the blood pressure, and cholesterol for every visit with the doctor, and they should have that number when they leave, just like when you see your bank teller or you check online for your bank account, you know your bank balance. 
Wow, so it's important to make sure we know our numbers and be compliant with that. Now, for someone that's had a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes, it's not the end of the world. I know you said that. You're saying, but there are viable treatment options and regimens that you and your team here at the Price can get them on to get them on a healthy lifestyle. Correct. There are, there are many different treatment options for type 2 diabetes now. There's been so many new drugs in the treatment of type 2 diabetes, but still the number one best treatment is weight loss okay. and exercise. I see, that is very important. Now, of course, you being a board certified endocrinologist, I know you treat a lot of type two diabetes and those patients that have type one, but you also address the issues of hormones. And I've heard through a little birdie that when we're over the age of 40 years old, a lot of times our hormones can vary and change on us. Correct, so what happens as we age, it's just a normal process of aging and women go through a change where their cycles stop. Yes. Estrogen levels are going down, okay. and they have the symptoms, hot flashes, night sweats, mood changes, irritability, yes. et cetera, et cetera. But that happens to women usually after 40, sometimes okay. um, in the early 40s, usually more commonly after age 50, all caused by estrogen deficiency. And it's kind of probably undertreated in women, okay. um, but it's even more undiagnosed in men. I see. Men have decreased in testosterone levels even at early as age 40, but definitely after age 50, men are losing testosterone levels every year. So there's a lot of controversy about men with testosterone. Um, that's a whole long story, but it's, I advise you to talk to your um, endocrinologist okay. that's close to you about women replacing their hormone therapy, if it's safe, because right? okay. if they have history of prior breast cancer, they can't do that. I see and men for treating their testosterone deficiencies. Wow, and I, you gave so many great options out there and I think it's important to note that every patient is not alike, right? Just because it didn't work with one person doesn't mean it won't work with others and that's why it's important to really collaborate and partner with your local endocrinologist. Of course. Wow, so any lasting words of wisdom for someone out there, they're saying, okay, Dr. Watts, I hear you. You did a great job explaining type two diabetes, even touched on type one, and also hormone replacement therapy at the 40 years old. Maybe they're 39, hovering on 40, and they wanna be the healthiest they can be. Anything to get them on the road of success to help prevent any of the ailments? Well, I mean, it's pretty simple. Okay. I mean, let's just keep it as simple as possible. And my first advice to anybody um, who's thinking about these symptoms or thinking about these complications, first know your results. Okay. Important. I see patients come from other offices and, and said they were told the results were normal. Uh, what did they check? I'm not sure. They said oh, they wow. were normal. Okay. Well, I think patients are, uh, should be more informed about what test was done and what was the number, not just it was normal. So patients should get informed and know the test that's done for female hormones yes. or the diabetes or testosterone hormone, you should know your results. And then once you know your results, you can decide if you are a candidate for therapy. Okay. And then you have to discuss your therapy options with the local expert. Wow, so be your own best advocate, right? Right. Because after all, it's your health. You're watching The Dose. We're aiming to keep you well. Stay with us.